Hey guys, today I'm talking about content designers. Something I came across today was what was called a content designer. And what I initially thought that was turns out to not be what it was. But there seems to be this trend now that there's this new role called a content designer. And a content designer is responsible for the end-to-end content that needs to be created and is needed while producing products. Now, that sounds very similar to what I originally had called a UX writer two years ago. And I don't know if I read that or whether it was something that just came to me, but a lot of other people were thinking the same thing. But yeah, I it, it seemed very similar. But it's kind of not because the UX writer is responsible for the user experience writing. Whereas the content writer is looking at all the other bits of information, not necessarily the experience. I'm sure it would support the experience, but you would work in collaboration with the UX writer. You'd probably have a head of content. Um, who would be, I guess, responsible for pulling all these writers together. And I'm sure that you would also then say, well, there's a case to have a content strategist and they've got to collaborate with the user experience designers and they've got to collaborate with the user interface designers and the product owners and everybody else. And I see this as a very crucial role. Please don't think for a second that I don't understand the value of having these resources on a team. And it really is a team. It takes a team to put this stuff out because I've been in teams and led teams where I didn't even know at the time that we needed such dedicated resources to actually create content. And you end up using marketing material to kind of fill the gaps. And that's not actually the right thing because most of the time the marketing department don't really know what they're doing. So whether you call them content designers, like I've once suggested verbal designers, which is something I learned about in New York at an RGA uh, workshop, or whether it's a UX writer or a content strategist or anything like that, I think it's all very much needed. But then this term content designer really got me thinking. And there's something that seems to be skipped over in a lot of teams. And that is the actual visual content that is needed when an app goes live. And what I mean by that is not the UI. It's not the built product. It's not the marketing material, which for the most part is just such rubbish. It's always these gimmicky people with like a phone in their hand and they're posing in lofty shots, you know. And that's just not how people really want to know about your product. They want to know the benefits of your product. And visually, you've got to communicate what something is. Where I first realized that like even... You know, me and our team had made a mistake because we were using marketing material. We had what we'd been given. And in that, it took one of the senior execs that I was working with, he dropped a mail and said, hey, you know, I love what you guys have done with this design. But that person doing a handstand or break dancing or whatever they were doing, what has that got to do with logging in with a single login identifier. And you've got to go, okay, 
And of course the team tried to justify it. And some people came to me and said, well, the guy's on one hand and it's one, uh, you, like one like password and you're in and all this rubbish. We were trying to retrofit something and that's a huge mistake. There should be an art director. There should be what I believe you should call a content designer who end to end is responsible for all the things. So now I'm just going to like sit and think, what are all the assets that you could need? Well, you've got to have icons. The UI guys are not thinking about these things until the end. You've got to have screens and they've got to be in devices usually because that's probably the best way for people to understand something's on a mobile is when it's placed inside a mobile. They've got to be thought of in, in terms of how they would work on banners. You've got to think about what would the screens or the style of the illustrations or photography be inside the app or the website or whatever you're producing. Then it's how do you put these screens inside iStores and places like that. And then who's responsible for the storytelling part during onboarding and during help and all these other things where you need to take people through a very gentle process to kind of teach them how to use the product and services that you offer. So who's responsible for this? Because I can tell you now, if there's one thing I've learned, it's not the UI guys. Now, I was very fortunate. I hired a lot of people from agencies because I believed they had a good work ethic and I was able to offer them a opportunity to have more of a life when they came into corporate. So a lot of people leaped over. But the beauty of them is that they were skilled digital designers, period. They had previously been doing banner ads and website layouts and so on. I wouldn't say that they would be my ideal content designer, but I would certainly say they would be as close as you're going to get. But you do need somebody. I think you need one or two or, or a few visual designers that are creating all the different assets that you might need when you go to market with your product. And it shouldn't be something that's thought about at the end of the whole process. It should be thought about during the process. Things should be prepared in the same way that my expectations were that writers were writing down these features so that stakeholders could communicate consistently and effectively internally with some great copy about what the new features are in the same way that they would produce the same copy that was needed to go out as tweets, to go to the agencies, to brief them. All these things were produced during that process and through those iterative sprints that you go through when you're in product teams. So why isn't there a content person on every squad who's responsible for the same thing? Now, it might be a bit much to put another person in a squad that's probably really bloated, but you could certainly go and start putting some sort of templating and structure and guidance and direction in your design system even. So you could have it part of your core team and then you could support the respective squads. But I don't know what you'd call it. And maybe I'm like, I've got this all wrong because I've looked and I've gone through a number of sites to really understand what a content designer is. And everybody actually has a very different definition of it, but it still goes back to there are writers that are doing design. On that note, I do have to say, if you're a designer, you probably need to ask yourself, are you somebody who enjoys pushing pixels around or are you somebody that really likes to solve problems? And if you're a problem solver, even if you're a visual person, you need to be able to learn to articulate what it is that you do and what the problems are that you're solving and how to basically explain this to people. And in that, you're gonna be closer to surviving when they suddenly start saying, you know, we've got too many UI designers, or wait a minute, the design system is already doing 50% of the work. And we don't need all these UI guys, we need great thinkers. 
So if there's a skill that I could advise any visual person to develop, it's the ability to articulate themselves, the ability to communicate effectively what design problems you are solving. My name is Craig Jamison. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, leave a comment and stay cool.